So ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our one o'clock session with our uh, special guest, Brandon Goodwin. Hello. I'm going to spotlight Brandon Goodwin really quick. All right. That's so nice. this is how to start and run a video production company. Brandon is the founder and executive producer at Blend Studio in Springfield, Missouri, and one of my former classmates at Missouri State University. So <laughs> could have been a long time, Brandon. So look, Brandon, I will turn it over to you. All right. Well, thank you everyone uh, for being here. Um, so uh, what's kind of interesting is I actually started in a really similar position to everybody that's on this Zoom call right now. So I uh, was in high school, uh, just like you were. I was involved in STN. I went to STN competitions. I went to other journalism competitions. And uh, I basically started my video production company at, at the same age that you are at this moment. So uh, that's what's kind of uh, kind of neat about this and why I think you might uh, have some stuff to take away from this. I started this when I was 17 years old and uh, I'm now 36 and uh, still going with it. And I've still uh, somehow managed to avoid getting a real job somewhere. So I'm going to, can I share my screen, Grant? Is that possible? Um, let's see here. I might have to have uh, Grant, let me t share my screen. Sorry, folks. You can uh, share your screen now. Oh, okay, great. All right. So let's see here. Um, about Blend a little bit. Uh, well, first, I, I guess I should say I uh, have this video production company, Blend, Blend Studio in Springfield, Missouri. If you've seen anything, uh, any resources from ASB Classroom, that's also a product of Blend. Uh, we also create that kind of in our, our spare time and stuff. So we make a lot of the uh, resources that are on ASB Classroom. Um, about Blend, I'm going to play you our demo reel. This will show you kind of our work, the, the kind of stuff we've been doing in the last couple of years. I'm just going to put my microphone up against my speaker. I hope this works so you can hear the sound. This might not work great, but we'll try it. that is our demo reel, our current demo reel. And uh, I want to show you a few, obviously a lot of that's commercial production stuff. I'm going to get into that a little bit more. Uh, but here's a little bit about Blend. This is just like what a, this is our office, what a typical pre-production meeting looks like at our office. I just kind of want to give you some visuals of what we're up to these days. Uh, this is a, a shoot for one of the videos that was actually in our reel. Uh, again, here's another kind of typical a uh, commercial video production shoot where you've got, uh, you know, a bunch of talent and clients and uh, other grips and production folks on set for this shoot. Here's just a really simple stripped down shoot of if you, if you were, uh, if you've done any of the editing assignments uh, that we've, 
done in past competitions. Like this was from one of them, um, and just a simple kind of behind the scenes music interview uh, sort of deal. So I kind of wanted to go over a few common routes uh, for for everyone before uh, for like the ways that people get into production. I have a lot of these conversations where I'll go and get uh, coffee with someone that's looking to get into production and they want to get started. And so I kind of give, I kind of send them down this, this route where I say, uh, you know, you can go the journalism route and, uh, that's one way to do it in this, in this world where you are now in high school, basically, these are kind of three common routes, journalism, you can go the filmmaking route, then you can go the commercial route. And what we've done, we went the commercial route. We were a commercial video production company. So if you want to go into journalism, um, you know, like that's going to be a, any of these routes you go down, honestly, the first 10 years, you're going to be doing any of this. You're going to be doing really low level stuff. You're going to be really grinding it out. You're really going to have to work your way up through either one of these routes. So, um, but just to give you a feeling like what I tell people is let your lifestyle, like what kind of lifestyle you want to have, let that guide the, the kind of storytelling uh, career that you decide to go into. So if you want to do the whole run and gun thing, run around, if you love news, if you love journalism, if you want to go be that type of storyteller and you're willing to move a lot, if that's necessary, go to different city from city to city and kind of bounce around and stuff, then the journalism route's great. Uh, the filmmaking route, like a lot of the filmmaking people I know that are on filmmaking crews and that kind of stuff, they'll be on a job for a month or two and then they'll uh, basically be unemployed for a while and then they'll get hired as crew to be on another job, but they're also bouncing around quite a bit. Um, and uh, there are also, uh, you know, studio jobs that you can get in the filmmaking world that are a little more, or post-production or special effects jobs and stuff that are a little more routine in, in those kind of places. Or if you're in the, on the producing side or if you're uh, in the logistics, but uh, I, I'm in the commercial world, um, all the way to the right there. I'm, we make commercial videos for our clients. So basically people hire us to make videos for them. And the reason that I'm in that career at the moment, at least, is because I, I really like the stability of working nine to five, Monday through Friday. That's just, that fits my lifestyle right now. And so uh, that's, I would say like, what kind of lifestyle do you want to live? and let that guide which of these routes you go down. Because if you don't like traveling and you don't like uh, super crazy long days and, uh, and you know, bounce around from city to city, you might not like being crew on films, on major motion picture films, because that's what that requires. Uh, so I like the nine to five, I like the regular job at this phase of my life. And so that's why we do the commercial video production. But I think it's helpful to, hear that whenever I wish someone would have told me that because all I thought at your age was like oh I just want to make videos I want to just make films or I just want to do something with video production and it's like I didn't really know how that would fit into one of those careers and so I wish someone would have told me like yeah pick your lifestyle and then go do the thing that uh, reflects the lifestyle you want uh, a little history this is me in high school uh, with braces on the left side of the screen uh, maybe maybe I had my braces off in a second. I don't think so. I think they're on, I've got them in both, but either way. Uh, so 99, 2003, that was me in high school. I was making videos all the time. I was one of the kids that was just in the edit bay. Before school, I would uh, miss classes. Don't miss your other classes. Don't do that. But I, I would stay after school. Uh, and I was always in that edit bay, always working on video projects. It was just like, I was just a like, a, I don't know. I was always in there. It's like, was, uh, the thing I liked doing in high school. And so, um, I just made videos all the time in high school, like pretty much one a week, my junior and senior year of high school. Uh, I was on student council. And so I had, I would go in and, uh, I made it a, just my own goal. No one made me do it. I just was like, I'm going to make one student council video a week. And so just that deadline to produce, um, was the best thing I could have done. And it teaches you how to do it. I'll also say, um, also, you know, like I was not good at this when I first started, like 1999, 2000, uh, fresh into this. I actually have the, uh, the camera that I first learned on. And of course it's not going to show up with my 
virtual background. You can imagine what, oh, here we go, what it looks like. I've got that uh, up here, it uh, shoots to super VHS. And we were using those cameras and uh, those are the ones we learned on. And I was not good at this in the beginning. So um, it took me a lot of practice and a lot of failure. And uh, some people are just naturally gifted at this. I was not a person that was naturally gifted at this. It took many, many years of improvement. And still, like I look back at work from four or five years ago and I'm really embarrassed by it. Like it's, you kind of, you kind of constantly want to be improving anyway. So, uh, so yeah, that's, that's a, a little bit. If you, so if you're not like, if this doesn't come naturally to you, if storytelling, video production doesn't come naturally and you really want to do it, you can figure it out um, with enough practice and mistakes. So from 2003 to 2013, I shot weddings. Uh, this was 10 years of shooting weddings and I probably shot 75 to 100 weddings. And again, this repetition was great for me. Um, I didn't mind doing it. And this is back you know, when we were shooting on tape you had to log and capture the tape. It wasn't just a digital file you could drag over from the camera. Um, really involved, uh, really time consuming, but just that repetitive deadline of constantly producing, constantly shooting, constantly editing, that's what really helped me cut my teeth in this, uh, in this industry. So 10 years of that. And uh, then I decided I wanna start doing more uh, commercial work. Uh, work for businesses, basically. And so uh, basically since then, and then this is some shots from some recent uh, shoots that we've done. The one on the left is a music video that we recently did. And the one on the right is a, I believe, a, a, like a, a food photography shoot uh, that we did where we need to make it look like a picnic outdoors and we were shooting it overhead. So um, now our sets are bigger. Uh, it's more people to manage. Uh, but all the core things, all the core storytelling, you know, beginning, middle, end, um, wide, medium, tight, shooting sequences, all the stuff you're learning right now, all the stuff you're practicing in these contests, um, it's like, it's all the same stuff I learned. It's just, it kind of takes a different uh, form if you end up in different careers or in different jobs, but it's all the same stuff. If you know how to learn, if you learn how to tell a story, it's literally STN is tell the story. Like if you learn how to tell a story, you will always have a job in production because it's the hardest part is just breaking down. Like, what is the idea here? What is the story? Or even with commercial work, what is the concept? What is the focus of what we're doing? And people with good ideas that can clearly communicate them will always have a job in this industry, no matter how much the uh, technology or equipment changes. So that's just a little brief history of what I've, uh, of, of my career, I guess, up to this point. And I'm still, I still consider myself pretty young, even though many of you probably don't think so. Um, I'm 36 now. And I, I still think, man, there's so much we can do to improve. There's so much more to look forward to. I've got all these other ideas for other video projects or, or films or documentaries that I'd like to make someday. So um, I'm still not, I would not consider myself finished at all. Like I still have a lot to learn and a lot of ways to grow. And, and, uh, and I think that sort of built-in curiosity is good and it helps you uh, and it keeps you humble because you know that you still have so much to learn. So um, yeah. Next, uh, a little test for anyone out there that's thinking about becoming an entrepreneur. An entrepreneur is just someone that starts their own project or starts their own business. Cause that's what I did. I started making videos straight out of high school, shooting weddings basically. And, uh, I did that for, for a very long time. And, and, uh, so this is kind of a test to see if this is the lifestyle for you. Um, because some people think they want to start a business. Um, but they think, they take this test and they're like, maybe not. So these are some kind of things. Do you like building things on your own? So do you like building things from the ground up? Do you go out of your way to, even if it's not assigned to you or whatever, you're spending your own time dreaming up little projects uh, by yourself. I remember even in high school, I would sketching out ideas for logos for the video production company I want to start or that I wanted to start. Um, I would just I would just go out of my way to build things, and uh, I and I'm really uh, obsessive and uh, and just into that. So for me, that was that's something I look back at as kind of a sign that I, I was a little bit built to do this kind of work. 
Um, can you learn quickly on your own? Can you get on YouTube and figure it out? If whatever that thing you don't know how to do in Final Cut or Premiere or After Effects or whatever, if you get stuck, can you figure out how to get unstuck and make it happen? That's very important uh, if you're going to start this on your own. It's just self-education. Find the right blogs, find the right YouTube channels, all that stuff, and just figure this thing out. Um, or by trial and error, just try it and see if it works. Um, can you go a couple of months without an income? Now, this is really important, um, especially when you get older, especially when you start to, you know, have like a family or a house or stuff. Not that you have to have any of that stuff, but um, can you go a couple months without income in the beginning? Uh, for me, right out of high school, I mean, I was uh, living with friends and uh, sleeping on couches and uh, just wasn't making any money, but that was okay because I was already used to having kind of a uh, like much lower lifestyle. So think through that. Can you, can you make it a few months without money? That also means you need to save. You need to have a little bit of a savings going before you just jump into becoming an entrepreneur. Uh, can you talk to people? Does the idea of, of picking up your phone and your phone and making a phone call, is that intimidating to you? Um, and if it is, that's okay, but you're going to have to learn to go talk to people. You're going to have to learn to interact. You're going to have to learn how to present to clients in front of, uh, in front of multiple people and to, uh, yeah, just to know how to talk to people. Basic speech skills uh, are, are critical. And you can learn that. If you're not good at it, don't let that like bum you out. You can learn how to do that. Um, again, that goes back, can you learn quickly on your own? The second thing on the list. If you don't know how to do that, you need to go figure that out. Um, because talking to people is a huge part of being an entrepreneur. And it's a huge part of starting your own business in anything. Um, and then last, can you manage a project? And this is something in high school that I can't believe I never learned. And uh, honestly, I'm just learning it fairly recently uh, in my life and professional career is just basic project management skills. And we'll talk more about that in a second. But can you keep things on budget and on debt and, you know, and, and within a deadline? So, and you can look back at this recording. I'm going pretty fast. So if you're taking notes, I'm sorry. So um, a successful idea, let's say you've got an idea for a video or a business or an invention or whatever it is. If you're an entrepreneurial person, you probably have a hundred ideas a day. Um, just remember your, the idea is worth about 1% and passionate execution is worth the other 99%. So 1% of the value is on your idea. The rest, it's just hustling and making it happen and doing it with excellence. So, um, and it's not just executing it with excellence, it's passionate execution. The reason I say passionate is because if you ever start a business, um, whether it's video production or not, that doesn't really even matter. Make sure you're doing it because you love it, not because uh, you think you're gonna make a much, like a bunch of money or you think, uh, or you think it would be cool to be a certain kind of person or something like you're like, I've always wanted to be a director and people will think I'm cool if I'm a director or people will think I'm cool if I move to Los Angeles or New York or, or if I travel the world or, you know, don't do it because of, of that. Do it because you're passionate about it because you love it. Um, there's some, there's uh, the saying that I forget where exactly where I remember, remember reading it, but it's, do you want to be someone or do you want to do something? And if you just want to be someone, if you want to be somebody, and if you want to impress people, that's not a very good reason to do something. Do it because you want to do the thing. Do it because you enjoy the process, because you like the industry, not because you want to be known or seen as whatever kind of person. So uh, that's something that's, I think, very important. Also, don't be afraid to share your ideas with people. Uh, they're not going to steal them. And uh, everybody's too busy to steal each other's ideas. So, and even if they steal it, it's really the hardest part is ex executing it anyways. So uh, just remember that if you're kind of that entrepreneurial kind of person, you're going to have a million ideas a day. Really try to pick one 
and do that and really commit to it. Cause that's, that's going to be your main challenge as an entrepreneur is you have a thousand ideas and no time to do any of them. Um, and I feel that same way. And so it's like learning the process of nope, pick something, stick to it. So yeah, uh, the blend process. So this is how we produce video projects. And this is what I wish someone would have told me in the beginning, because if you're, if you're in this webinar, you're probably, there's probably been someone in your life, whether they're, um, I don't know, a little older than you and they run a business or like, it could be your church or something where they're like, Hey, will you make this video for us? And then you just immediately say, yeah, I can do it. And, uh, and then you're like, okay, now what do we do? What do you want? Uh, how, how do we make this? So, um, I'm going to kind of tell you our process. Uh, this is the exact process that we work with, uh, on actual video clients with budgets, um, ranging, just all over the place. And so this will work no matter if it's a no budget budget project thing, or if it's a big budget project thing that this is, this is what we use. We start with the discovery meeting. So if someone says, Hey, uh, we'd really like you to make a video. I go, great. Let's schedule a meeting. And, uh, when we schedule that meeting, we go over a list of questions and I'm going to show you those next, but, uh, never agree to make a video. Uh, until you do the discovery meeting. So if someone says, hey, uh, hey, Brandon, can you help? We, we really like your videos you've been putting online. Uh, can you, what do you think about making a video for us? Your instinct is always to go, yeah, I can do it. Yeah, let's get started. This sounds fun. Okay, let's get going. It's like, no, no, no. If this is a paid thing or if this is uh, or any time, type of project, start with the meeting, go, let's set aside a time to go over the discovery meeting. I'll show you the discovery meeting notes here in a second. The second step after you do that discovery meeting is you will send a proposal and a treatment. And again, I'll show you exactly what that looks like. Um, then, so in that discovery meeting, you go over all the details. And then after the discovery meeting, you say, okay, here's what I think I can make for you. And here's what it's going to look like. And here's what it's going to cost and how long it's going to take. Third, you do pre-production. That's going to change for everything. I'll show you kind of our process for that too. Uh, then production. And if you do the first three things, right, if you know what you're making and you agree on how it should be made and you've done all the pre-production, then you literally just shoot it and edit it. Um, so that's production, post-production billing. You got to send an invoice. I'm going to show you how to send an invoice really, really basic, but this is our process right here. We do every single video project. We probably do, I don't know, a hundred, to 150 video projects a year at Blend, and they all go through the same exact process. So discovery, um, and I guess I should say this too, like I started out as a freelance video production person. So I had, a, I had a camera and people would hire me to come shoot stuff and I would shoot and edit it by myself. So I really started my career that way from like 2003 until really up, up until 2015 or so 2015, 2016. And though at that time I've, uh, since then I'm really more on the producing side, which means that I am organizing projects. I'm getting projects going. I'm doing these discovery meetings and then I'm handing off the actual shooting and editing to other people in our company on our team. So, uh, if, if that kind of helps clarify, like how my role has sort of shifted. So, Here's how to do a discovery meeting. Before you start any project, before you agree to do anything, uh, you wanna say, what is the message? What are we making here? What's the point? The common uh, phrase you might have for this in the video journalism world is, what is the focus statement? Like, what are we doing? Um, it's very important. If they can't explain what the message of the video is, and if you can't explain it, then you're gonna have a bad time producing it. Uh, cause you're not going to know what you're making and everyone's going to pretend like they know what they're doing until at the very end, the client's super unhappy with it and everyone's miserable. So what's the message? Who is the audience? Who are we talking to? It can't be everyone either. Like, is this, is this video for middle-aged people who live in rural communities? That's going to be a different, uh, video than, uh, urban high schoolers. So like you really want to think about who the audience is and your client needs to be able to answer that question. 
and write these down when they're you know saying this don't just ask me these questions you want to take notes on this so you can build your proposal so what's the message whose audience what is the tone the vibe the reference like what's the style of this and a lot of times what we do is we pull uh we pull videos from vimeo or from youtube and just just bring them up and go like yeah we want something like this so the more that they can show you what they want um is really helpful to know what they want and then i guess i would also say that sometimes it's helpful to get an we call it an anti-reference we say like what do you not want and then they can send us a video of like we do not want something like this and so that also helps. So references, anti-references, the length, how long is the video? How long, what are we shooting for? Is it a 30 second spot that needs to play on television and it needs to be 30 seconds? Or is this a web video that can be, you know, longer? It doesn't matter what length it is, as long as it's under a minute and a half or two minutes or something. Uh, who approves it? That's really important. So who actually gets the final say on who approves this video? Is it the person you're talking to? Or is that person's boss? Is it the CEO of the organization? You gotta know that before you start because uh, when you start sending this for revisions, that's gonna be really important to know who approves it. And my tip there is get one person that is the gets the final say uh, on the approval of the video project. When is the deadline? Obviously that's very important. And what is the budget? Do they have a specific budget they're working with? Or are they just looking to get a quote from you on what something like this would cost? And either way is fine. Uh, we do it both ways. Sometimes clients come to us and we say, it's this amount of money and we need you to make it for that. And we go, okay, great. We know our limitations and we build the project from there. Other times they're getting bids from different production companies and they just want to, you know, know what our, they want to know what we bid on it. And so sometimes we'll put it together and they won't tell us what the budget is. That's also fine. We do it both ways. So Tip, uh, never agree to anything before or during a discovery meeting. That's why we send proposals. Uh, don't ever say you'll do anything. Don't ever agree to any part of any of these projects. Don't give the impression you're even doing the project. Uh, this is to find out, discovery is to find out if you can do the project. Uh, and you might just say, no, you might say, I'm sorry, I can't do this, or I'm too busy, or someone else can do it, or here's, here's the name of someone else or whatever. So, uh, yeah, here is a proposal. So the next step is proposal. Um, this is our cover page for the proposal. This is uh, for a prep school that we that wanted a explainer promotional video. We submitted it on June 24th. We asked for a response by July 24th. Uh, this is just stuff. What is the deliverable? What exactly are we making? What are the objectives? And then we put in a timeline of, you know, when are we going to start pre-production? When are the actual shoot days? When is post? When's the first uh, draft due? And then when's final? Treatment. So a treatment is just conveying your visual idea. Uh, what are we trying to make here? Obviously, this is going to be interviews and B-roll of... Uh, uh, at this school that we we're getting this uh, proposal. And then we write, you know, write something that explains what you're trying to do. We interview teachers and parents who talk about this school, about how the school is a great place to learn and grow. We mix this with B-roll from the classroom. The tone is hopeful and inspiring. Example, and there's a URL for, uh, you can send them to say it was something like this, basically. So your treatment, and this can look any certain way. It doesn't have to be formatted like this. It can be this can just, this can be a Google spreadsheet. It could be, you could print this out. You could, you could really, this can take on any form. It doesn't have to be this like presentation slide deal. Um, but it is important to communicate to the client, like, what is this going to look like? And uh, what are we going for here? So, cause a lot of people don't have the imagination you do. That's why they're hiring you. So you've got to convey your imagination on paper. Here's another treatment that we, uh, that we wrote for, uh, this one was called influence. It was kind of this gritty, uh, sort of, uh, I don't know, sort of, uh, video we were making for a nonprofit here in school, here in town. And, so again, we wrote just a little bit of a write-up over here and then some references from, uh, from other videos, basically, uh, to get the idea conveyed to the client on what we were trying to make. And then we put together a quote. Uh, again, this can look however you want. You can add, you can get really detailed for this. For this one, we left it really simple. 
pre-production $500. And that'd be, uh, you know, that's a flat rate thing. Production days, two production days at $1,500 each. And then post-production $1,500. This was the total budget of $5,000 for this project. But again, you can get really detailed if you want. You can, you can uh, give line items all the way down to uh, what every single crew member is going to take, like all of your hours. There's no standard uh, for this. It's just, this is a way of conveying, here's what we're making for you. And here's uh, what it's going to cost. Um, at the end of the day, that's the most important thing. We have this little thing at the end where we put my email address and a phone number to get in touch with Blend. So uh, that's a proposal. And then, so that's what you send after the discovery meeting. You basically take your notes from the discovery meeting and you come up with that proposal and treatment. And uh, then you, you know, send that off. And then, then you put it on them. You say, do you want me to produce this? Here's my proposal, yes or no. The question is no longer on you. The question is on them. And so if they say, yes, that sounds good. Get that in writing in some, some form or fashion. Even a response to an email is good. Um, but, but yeah, so that's, that's our process. We do that for every single job. Um, how much do I charge? I get this question most of the time. And what I tell people when they're in high school is a lot of times uh, people in the professional production industry, uh, at least in the commercial production industry in the Midwest where I am, it's about $100 an hour. So you're going to make about $100 an hour um, for doing a lot of these things. That's if you are professional. So the and by professional, my definition of professional is, can you make the video perfectly with no flaws? There's no problems with white balance. There's no problems with focus. There's no sound problems. Everything goes perfectly smoothly. Every single thing while you're doing it, you make no mistakes. While you're editing it, you make no mistakes. Everything is delivered perfectly to spec. That's what I mean by professional. Professionals get paid about $100 an hour. That might be a little more depending on what part of the country you're in, um, especially if you're out on the West Coast in LA and New York. If you're in bigger cities, whatever, it's going to cost more. But uh, I say generally it's $100 an hour. So how do you gauge how professional you are? So what I tell people is if you feel like you're 20% confident that you are going to deliver a perfect video uh, with no flaws, then you will need to charge $20 an hour. If you're 100% confident, you can provide a professional from beginning to end video that's absolutely professional, then you should charge $100 an hour if you're 100% confident. So whatever percent confident you're going to be to deliver that perfect process and a perfect video, uh, no video is perfect, but you know what I mean, like a professional video, how, whatever percentage of confidence you have, that's how much you should charge an hour. So if you're 0% confident that you can do this, you should not charge people. You should still do the video, still do it for free for uh, experience if you want to, but, uh, but you shouldn't charge for it. If you're 75% confident, $75 an hour. So that's kind of a rough way to think about it, but that's the best way I've, I've come to uh, give advice on how much people should charge for these things. So um, on to pre-production. Once you've sent the proposal uh, and once they said, yes, we want this proposal, this sounds great, then you are ready to start pre-production. And this means building a schedule for your production, for uh, what are the shoot days, when is this due, schedule the, the, the editing time, schedule enough time for them to review the project, uh, the edit three times. So um, all of that in the schedule, you got to schedule all that out. And then you also have to come up with a budget. If you're doing this all yourself, it's going to be the budget's going to be really easy because you're going to be able to shoot and edit everything. But if you've got a big crew of people and are hiring animators and hiring graphic people on the end uh, or special effects people, that kind of stuff, then your budget is going to get big and complicated. And you want to make for sure that you're not going to run out of money because if you're the producer and you run out of money, then you lose that money. Um, and so you don't want to do that. Um, a tip I wish, again, I learned in high school and no one taught me this or I wasn't paying attention that week, but uh, just learn basic project management, like simple project management. Don't go crazy with it yet. Like, but 
if, if you have time, I really recommend learning the basics of project management. Just Google project management, like easy project management or simple project management or something. Uh, and get on YouTube and watch a video or something on that because that will help you uh, with pre-production. It'll also help you with like just getting your projects done at school. So like if you've got papers, if you were like me in high school and you waited literally until the last, like at like 10 o'clock at night, the night before the paper was due to start the paper, like that's just like, it's crazy and you can't live that way forever. And uh, this will help you learn how to manage that kind of stuff too. So just learn basic project management. Um, really, really would have helped me uh, alleviate a lot of uh, unnecessary suffering in my life. Production. If you did your pre-production well, then you just got to shoot it and you've got to edit it and then you've got to review it and then deliver it. So this isn't a video on, or this isn't a webinar on how to shoot or edit, um, but this is the process. And if you do your pre-production well, then you will be able to shoot and edit with ease. Um, and then you will send that to review. Again, give the client a few different rounds. We say up to three rounds. So we'll send a first draft. They'll give us notes. We'll send a second draft. They'll give us notes. We'll send a third draft. Hopefully that's the final draft. And then we deliver it. Um, yeah. So billing, this is the last step after you do the discovery meeting and then you figure out what they want. You send the proposal with the treatment based on the information in the discovery meeting. And then you do your uh, pre-production and then you shoot it and you edit it. Then you have to bill for it. So billing just means sending an invoice. And um, when I was in high school, I don't think I realized, I didn't understand what an invoice was. So uh, invoice is just a bill. You gotta send the bill. It's like at a restaurant, you get the bill at the end of the meal, uh, people pay it. Like that's all an invoice is. It's just a bill. Uh, tip, get deposits from first time clients, get half of the money up front. And, uh, that's just something I wish I'd have known back when I got started again, uh, all lessons learned the hard way. Here's an example of an invoice. An invoice is just a piece of paper. Here are the most important parts. You have to have your company or your address or your name on the invoice. All this, is, all this is is a thing that says, hey, send a check to this person uh, right here in the top left corner. And then you write out, remember how you put together this estimate in your proposal? Well, that's where you fill in all the same information that you gave them in the proposal. And uh, you probably don't have to worry about tax if it's a, if, since you're doing it as a service. And then you uh, send the, this to them over email or whatever. Um, it just says, here's the amount, here's when it's due, and here's where you send the check. Very, very important. Or you can put your PayPal or Venmo information on it, whatever. Uh, a little tip for starting your own business, don't start with invoice 001 or invoice number one. People are going to know you've never done this before. So uh, start with invoice number 2936 or just make something up. Make it look like you've done this before, basically. Um, so lots of templates, just Google it, Google sample invoice or invoice template or whatever. Keep it very simple, um, especially in the beginning. And there's whole ways to do this with software as well um, that I'm not really getting into, but this is the basic way to get started. All right, so uh, I'm gonna wrap up my part of this before we go Q and A. Um, some tips for getting started. Keep your lifestyle cheap when you're young, don't go buy a bunch of stuff right now um, or right when you get out of high school. If you're gonna be self-employed, keep your lifestyle as cheap as possible. Um, avoid debt, avoid borrowing money, avoid credit cards if you can. Um, I know a lot of people take out student loans. If you can figure out a way not to take out student loans, then you know, don't because uh, debt will really, really cripple you if you're self-employed. It'll cripple you, cripple you either way, but um, really try to avoid that if you can. Not everybody can. Um, so uh, don't believe people when they tell you this project will be great for your resume. Like, I want you to make this video. Oh, it'll be great. It'll be great in your resume. No, it won't. They're lying to you. They're not lying. They're not trying to manipulate you, but they are trying to get you to do a video for free. 
And uh, that's never been true for me. I've, I've been doing this for a very long time. I've never, no one's ever been like, wow, that video, that person got out of you for free. That really showcases how great you are. So don't believe them. Do the video if you want to do it, but don't believe them when they tell you that. Um, if it's a musician or a religious organization, you're going to want to get paid up front. Uh, I have a typo there, up from. Uh, get paid up front from musicians and religious organizations. I've just, anytime I've been burned by uh, a client, it's been a, music, a musician, a record label, or some sort of religious organization. So my advice is to get paid up front 100% and uh, you want to owe them work. You don't want them to owe you money. Uh, don't sell to people that can't afford you. This just means like not everybody can afford what you're doing. So if you're having, if you're constantly like, my clients aren't paying, it's probably because you're selling to people that can't afford you. And you're saying yes to projects that you shouldn't have said yes to. So getting that deposit up front will help avoid that. But also know whenever it's like, you know what? I don't think this person is going to be able to afford this. And so then don't make the video. Don't spend all that time on it. Uh, just say, I'm sorry, we can't do this or get a deposit up front. Don't take things personally. Uh, when things go wrong, move on. Don't, don't let stuff beat you up. I mean, that's just good advice anyway, but uh, people do things because of who they are, not because of who you are. So like whatever thing they said to you that makes you upset, like let it go, try to let it go because uh, yeah, that will drag you down. Um, cooperate with others and compete with yourself. So uh, don't see your peers as your competition. Don't look at the other people at STN um, from these other schools. These are not your competitors. These are your collaborators. These are your co cooperative partners. They're here to help you. You are here to help them compete with yourself. Look at your own work and go, how can I make this better? Um, once you start looking around to other people and you'll either one, get really discouraged because their stuff's so much better than yours and it'll bum you out. Or if your stuff is better than theirs, you'll look down at them and be like, ah, these people don't have what it takes. We're so much better. And that'll get to your head. And that's also toxic. And then eventually that won't be true anymore. So uh, remember your peers around you are your collaborators. Uh, and if you want to improve your own work, compete with yourself. Um, that's, that's really huge. And then the last thing is just keep going, keep making stuff, keep working at this. The only way to get better at this is to keep doing it. So that's it. Q and a time. I'm sorry. I went a little long and I do want to answer your questions. Um, I'm going to put my email here. If you want to email me a question afterwards. Um, that is my email, Brandon at blendstudio.com. I'm going to put it in the chat too. Anybody got any questions? Awesome. Well, if you have any questions, thank you one, Brandon. Um, please use our chat feature. You can raise your hands while I mute your mic or you can use the Q&A feature. So uh, don't, be, don't hesitate to ask, uh, we're here for you. I guess we covered it. <laughs> Is there a way I can tell if people are raising their hands? Oh yeah, it'll be up here. Um, uh, it'll be the it'll show up in the pan, in the attendees area. It'll say where it's raised their hands. Uh, right now, you're just getting it's uh, a lot of people just thanking us. So, oh, here's okay. a question: How many employees do you usually have? Uh, we have four employees. There's me, my business partner Joe. Um, and then my wife actually works with us. She's our, um, does all of our accounting and tax stuff and all of the administrative duties. And then we have uh, Melina Magi, who is, also went to Hillcrest High School. Um, and she is uh, a producer with us. So she produces a lot of pro projects. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's four of us, but we hire a bunch of freelancers uh, when we need to, for bigger shoots and stuff. We'll bring on freelancers from all over the place to, so sometimes on set we'll have, 20 or 30 people there, but only four of them are, are actual employees. That's right. How often do you get, do you get jobs and how do you market? Uh, Instagram, uh, market on Instagram, get a, get a website up 
and getting an Instagram going. That's the biggest tips. Yeah. So otherwise it's just word of mouth and don't pay anybody for advertising unless you absolutely have to. And then we have a question from Edward uh, McDonough. Oh, what, what, are, what are some tips and hints in hiring people you previous, you previously did not know? Uh, take your time. Uh, take your time, really get to know the person before you hire them. Um, yep. Yeah, that's the biggest thing is, is go slow with hiring. Um, and the moment you realize that it's not working with that person, then you have to let them go. That's the other thing. Let set them free to go do something else. If it's not working, then end it quick as fast as possible. Awesome. I know that sounds harsh, but it's the world. It, it, it is the real world, unfortunately. Um, yeah. yeah. All yeah. right. Well, uh, oh, uh, we have one more question from Faith. Uh, what is one thing you wish you would have done differently? Uh, one thing I wish I had done differently, Faith, is that I kind of wish I would have gone and worked at another production company first before I started one. And that's something I'd really recommend to people is if you have a chance to go work at someone else's or whatever company you want to start. If you want to start a, an ice cream shop, then go work in someone else's ice cream shop for like six months or a year or something, and then go start your own. So uh, the same is with video production. But truthfully, there weren't a whole lot of video production companies in town that I act, I would have wanted to work with when I started. It was just, it was a very different landscape back then. So yeah, try to go work for someone else and then figure out how they do it and then improve on their process and start your own thing. 